Welcome to the Multi-Orgasmic Mama podcast, where sexual taboos around sex and motherhood are broken. I'm Tilly Storm, holistic sex and intimacy coach, jade egg, and tantric sex teacher. I work with high-achieving moms to ignite their sexual desire and break through their blocks to pleasure and the life they desire so they can experience epic sex and orgasmic motherhood. Grab more free resources at www.tillystorm.com. This episode is brought to you for free by the Essentially Embodied Woman Collective, my signature women's group coaching program for high achieving moms to get their desire back after having kids and up level their pleasure both in the bedroom and to life. If you're enjoying this content, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcasting app and please rate and review the podcast and share it with a friend who could use this amazing content. Spread the love, hot mama. Hey there, hot mama. It's Tilly. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about prioritizing your pleasure as a mom. Sometimes it can be extremely difficult, especially when you've got little kids running around all the time and a partner, and you are trying to be a good wife, a good mom, a good, all the things and strive for that little version of happy that you probably sought to experience when you were a kid. And when you actually get there though, it's like, uh, what in the world just happened? What is this? It might not have been what you quite expected and prioritizing you and your pleasure and the things that fill you up and that feel good to you can go on the back burner very easily. In fact, this is why most women come into our essentially embodied woman program, because they have gotten to a point where they feel overwhelmed, burned out. Their nervous systems are completely fried. They're in flight, fight, freeze, or fawn around anything that has to do with pleasure. Maybe your partner initiates and you completely shut down or get upset or get angry or have a sense of resentment toward them because you've given so much to everyone already today. How in the world is there anything left at the end of the day for uh, sex or anything like that? And this is something that so many of the women in our program work through as they go on this 16 week journey. So I wanted to bring Amber on today. She is a centrally embodied woman graduate who has went through this journey very gracefully and beautifully. Uh, She is a prime example of what it looks like to go from feeling fried, your nervous system being uh, just tapped out with kids and with uh, work and with health challenges and all of these things going on in the world right now uh, to feeling a sense of energy and aliveness inside, feeling revitalized and empowered to handle whatever is coming your way and to also uh, step into a new realm of sexuality with your partner, knowing that it's for you, that pleasure is actually for you. Uh, and that it's something that can fill you up and, you know, give you more energy if you actually were to engage in it. So I brought on Amber to share her story. So without further ado, I'll let her have it. Hello, my loves. It's Tilly Storm with a special guest today, Amber, mama for full-time professional and a life coach. Hey, Amber, how are you? Hey, Tilly. I'm great. How are you? I am wonderful. And I have brought Amber on and she is a graduate of our essentially embodied woman group coaching program. And I just wanted her to share her experience in the program with you. So you all can get a feel for what this is actually like and what it's really like to be doing sexuality work. (laughs) (laughs) All right, my dear. So I would love to know what were you struggling with that brought you to this program in the first place? What I was struggling with was I had an experience around COVID time um, with the health of my child and of course COVID going down and and that whole thing um, put me in this fight or flight mode. Um, And so with that, um, I had my own health issues and I did a lot of work along that, but I was still having just like anxiety, my nervous system just felt so like ramped up and out of control. I felt like even just being around my kids, if something would trigger me, I would feel like um, I wanted to run away. And I was just trying to like figure out how can I deal with this? Um, and, And one of my friends actually introduced me to your podcast. And so I started listening and I hit one of the episodes where you talked about the nervous system 
And um, so that really stood out to me. Um, and I got interested in that. And then, I mean, I'm a mom of four. I had my last kid nine years ago. You know, I haven't prioritized my pleasure probably since then, which is kind of scary to, to say, but just listening to some of your episodes and really like, um, just feeling like, yes, this is the next step for me. Like I, this is the thing I've done a lot of work, um, just trying to, to deal with emotions that I had suppressed for a long time. And as a mom, and um, a professional, all of that, but this was the area that I had not touched at all. And it just felt like this was like the missing puzzle piece for me. Yeah. Yeah. And was there anything in particular going on in your relationship that was like, yes, sexuality work. <laughs> <laughs> I know the nervous system stuff. What about sex with her? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I mean, my husband's been on board from the very beginning with this thing. Right. So he's, he's definitely like, he's very supportive. You know, he, he's always wanted to, me to make this a higher priority, not just for us as a couple, but for myself. And so, you know, it, it was, it's an area where like, we are, this is a huge part of us. And I was not, um, I was more trying to just keep moving forward with what things that need to be done rather than actually spending time on addressing my own pleasure. And this is something that came out of like my breakthrough session with you. That was very helpful. was just the fact that like, because of all these things, because I was a mom and, and a professional. And I kind of like made myself like focus on that stuff. It put the sexual side of things with my husband and, um, even my own thinking of my own pleasure as more of a, oh, this is a duty. This is something that I is on my to-do list because like, obviously I want to have a healthy relationship. So like, this is something that's on there, but then that the weight of that made me want to do it less right because for me it was another thing on my to-do list for another person just like for my kids and you make sure all their stuff's together and they're doing their thing and it's like okay to have a healthy you know quote unquote healthy relationship I need to do this I need to make sure that you know my husband's satisfied and he never said this to me you know but this is like my mind based off of my conditioning and all that stuff right that like this is something that I should be doing another should, right? Should be doing this, should be doing that. So, so because I was, was um, making it that kind of a duty, I will say, then my body was like, I'm going to tense up and I'm not going to actually want to do these things. I'm going to have you in your head the whole time. And that's what was so helpful about like my breakthrough session with you is that you know, this had been kind of like, these are things that go on in our heads. And I've talked to my husband about this, you know, here and there, but I didn't really have the clarity on it myself to fully like understand that that was why, like when my husband was like watching me undress, I would like try to turn away because I'm like, oh wait, if if I do that, then I'm going to have to do something with this. Mm -hmm. And so after that conversation with you, I was able to have more clarity to go into the conversation with him to be like, here's kind of where my head's been at. And that's why I've been acting this way. And so, and I don't want to do that anymore. And, and he was, you know, like I said, he was very supportive and he, I think he finally understood where I was coming from with that to where, you know, we are able to be a lot more playful now and have fun. And because it's not necessarily, it has to lead to a certain thing, but it's like, that's how life is more fun. Right. So So yeah, that was huge with getting me to even just at the beginning, because the breakthrough sessions towards the beginning of the program to get me like, okay, like I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And is there one particular thing that really shifted things for you? Like one, I mean, there's so many parts of the program, right? We, we talk about erotic languages. We talk about the nervous system. We talk about trauma healing and negative condition healing um, and doing that sort of work. As we do the jade egg, like, was there one thing in particular that really helped you to shift from this? uh, This is an obligation to, oh, I can actually have fun and explore and play and relax because it doesn't always have to lead to something. It can just be erotic play and fun, right? That's a hard question because I felt there was so many things. (laughs) Like, just like, 
I mean, I mean, you put together a really good program. It's, it touches on a lot of different ways to help people, you know, because everybody's going to, there's different things that are going to resonate with different people. But I guess I would say working with you and you, um, because the way you go about it is you, you create a space where people feel like safe enough and that they have permission to go to these places, right? So whether it's like just informing them about the way it affects your nervous system and infor- or informing them about like the primal piece of us that we're not tapping into or getting us, you know, practicing with a jade egg that like I had never used before, you know, so like that was new for me and, and it was helping me um, get to different places that I had never gotten to before. So, so I think um, just having that space and like permission that I could go wherever I needed to go was huge. Mm. Yeah. Right. (laughs) I, you know, when every time we add new women to the program, it's, I think there's that collective fear of like, oh my God, wait, we're actually talking about this. We're actually going there. I actually can open up about these things. So there's just this big blast of vulnerability. Right. Um, right. And I see it with all the new ladies every time they join. <laughs> it's like they're so like close off or terrified of talking and expressing. But yeah, I I love that you said that. The space that we hold in the program um, is a big part of the process of you tapping into that your erotic side and your playful self and all that. Um, because where else do you have the opportunity to do that where it's safe? Right. You know, cool. For sure. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm wondering what scared you the most about joining this program? I actually did not really feel scared to tell you the truth. Like I said, I'd done a, like a lot of work on just the issues that I was having before this. And so, and I knew like, so I understood like I'm a life coach. So I understand like so the goodness that you can get from like people creating space and having that support and having that community and the connection. And I also understood that, like, like I said, I mean, this was like, I I really felt like this was the missing puzzle piece for me. And so I was just determined that like this, I needed to address like my pleasure and my nervous system. And and that's what my body was telling me. And, and so I really wasn't, um, I really wasn't scared to tell you the truth. I was excited and just like ready, you know? Nice. Yay. (laughs) That's awesome. Okay. Well, what were your biggest wins, your biggest uh aha moments, anything like that? Some of my biggest wins, and and I guess I forgot to mention this in the first question, but uh, part of not putting my pleasure as like a priority, I had um, over time, like basically become numb, you know, like I had suppressed so many things, suppressed feelings, suppressed my own, you know, sexual trauma that I had been through that I totally like didn't think about it. You know, I didn't even bring it to consciousness, just suppressed myself as a priority for so long that like I became numb down there to where like, and that was another thing that was leading to, well, why would I be trying to initiate, you know, with my husband, if I really, if it's like, you know, eh, you know, I can't. So that was a huge result was that going through this program and really like doing the work and making myself a priority and allowing myself to kind of remove those blockages and work through that, those things that were like stuck energy within me, allow me to like feel to the point where it's like, um, I, I feel like the energy with me during the day, you know, like, it's not just like, oh, I'm getting it turned on. So now I'm ready to go. It's like, No, like when I actually like breathe into my cervix and I concentrate on the area, like I can, you know, while I'm working, while I'm doing whatever, like I can feel like energized and like, just like that life force. So, so, I mean, that is not just for the, the sexual piece of it. It's great. And, and it's in in the pleasure piece. And I'm still like working with like how to make that even better and better, you know, which, which is good. It's a process, but then on the just life piece of it, like using it as fuel for like myself as, as um, a professional, myself as a mom, myself as a wife, as a friend, 
you know, just somebody that's, you know, just um, wants to show up with joy and calm and not like anxiety and need the need to control everything. Right. So, so that was unexpected, like exciting for sure. Um, In the process, you know, addressing like, this did help my calm my nervous system. I mean, I am able to be with my kids and um, stay like calm and have fun and be playful with them. I don't feel like I want to run away. And of course, there's always those moments, but there's like, you understand like what's happening, right? So being conscious of that and then putting things in place to help yourself through that, which again, that is everything when that's, this is my life, you know, like this is, I want to be playful with my kids. I don't want to like, feel like I need to run away because, you know, like I'm being attacked by kids from Legend of Right, you know, like, (laughs) and, and I think another good part of that was the sexual blueprint that you introduced me to from Jai's program. And because I am like essential which is basically where like the five senses, you know, is good for like, I feel that and that helps me with turn on and stuff. But I got to the point where like with my kids, if things would get lots of noise or they'd be like pulling on me and all that stuff, I felt like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm getting beat up. Like, because I'm so, I am a central person. So like, to me, the overload of the noise or the feel or the touch was just like, oh my gosh, I'm going to run away. So just having to understand that like, that is because I am a central person. So I can also use that from a turn on perspective, which we've been trying and it's been good, but also just having the knowledge of that when my kids are around that, like, okay, this is why I'm feeling this way because we need to like calm the noise or we need to step away from it, you know, to get less, less of the touching and all that. So just, just things like that, that help reinforce the things that I was feeling and and helps you feel less crazy. Right. When you're like, it's not because I hate my kids. It's because, you know? Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask you something that you've probably not prepared for, but (laughs) do you have any advice for women who have multiple kids as you do that are terrified of doing anything like this because, Oh, I don't have time or, I'm single and I have two kids and, you know, your calls are in the middle of dinner time. How would I ever do this? I hear this all the time. Uh, So I'm wondering, like, is it worth it? And if so, you know, I know it's worth it. Right. Uh, But how do you overcome those logistical challenges? I mean, you're a mom of four. So I think you you would be a better expert on this than I would. (laughs) Right. Right. So that was another thing I really liked about your program, too, is it's set up in a way that it allows people to do it when it's convenient for them and when it makes sense for them because of the way things are set up and you do have calls at different times during the week and if you can't make a call you could watch the recording um there's also you know you have we have the group on vimify so you can always like post on there if you can't make a couple things um to like connect with people also you know you set us up with like our sue sister so like i keep in touch with her like on marco polo at least once a week and we're still you know talking even after the program i think the way that you set it up and that people can do it on their own time i think is super helpful for people that from a time perspective it would be tough I, and i think the other thing is like And I think even as moms, you know, we don't make ourselves a priority and that's the first issue, right? Like if you're not the priority, then you're not going to make it on the calendar. So that's kind of the first thing is like, you have to make yourself a priority. And I was at the point where I was damn determined to do that. And if you can allow yourself to just think through like how you can be damned to like make yourself the priority, you know, um, and get support, you know, like if, if you really need somebody to watch your kids while you are doing an exercise, while you're doing something like set that up as much as you can in advance. So that way you can set yourself up for success because it's almost like <laughs> this work is just like necessary. You know what I'm saying? Like th- by doing this kind of stuff, um, this kind of work for yourself, it's going to set yourself up for more success in the future with when you're facing these things that are just like stressing you out. Or when, like I said, when I was with my kids and I was like feeling like I need to run away. Well, if I continue to do that day after day after day, I'm just going to drive myself nuts rather than doing a program that's going to help me 
be able to cope through that, work through that, understand, calm my body down to where I can be playful with my kids, where I can be playful with my husband and have fun, you know? So like it's putting in the work so that way you can live the life that you want to live. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny because the women that always say those things is like, well, that's exactly why you're here and talking to me. (laughs) (laughs) The reason that you can't find time is why you are here. Uh, The reason that you can't bring yourself to ask for help or support from someone else is exactly why you are here. And sometimes I can't get them to see it. So it's awesome to hear that from you. And it's, I don't feel like I'm just the one preaching like, Hey, hi, this is, this right. is the work that you need to do. If that is your exact issue. <laughs> right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. Well, what was your favorite part of the program? Um, my favorite part I mean, I really enjoyed the morning ritual stuff from a day-to-day perspective, just because it was where I really set aside time for myself to concentrate on myself, even if it was like 10, 15 minutes. So I really like that. I really, I'm going to, so I'm just going to name several things, but I really like, and I've mentioned this to you, but the, so you were, you recommend books and one that really resonated with me was the wild feminine um, by Tammy Lynn Kent. And I just feel like that should be required reading for like every woman really. But um, that really um, resonated with me and tying that in with what I was doing on the program was really like life-changing for me. Like I said, moving forward, like how I want to show up and how I get my energy just showing up. Right. So that was huge. And I would say overall, just the pro, from the program standpoint, like it got me thinking about like, I'm just figuring this stuff I'm, and I'm not even figuring it out. I'm just like getting better and better at like, you know, on the second half of my thirties. So how can I communicate this with my kids in the future, you know, as they're growing up? So that way they are like honoring themselves and they are staying in tune with what they need and, and all of that. So that way they can feel supported and, and not have to go <laughs> through, through, I mean, of course, everybody needs to go through their own stuff, you know, to learn, but it got me thinking to like how I want to talk to them about this and how I want to act with my husband in front of them and, you know, to show them a healthy relationship, which I wasn't really thinking about before this. So that's really a great thing that I'm taking from this. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Well, what feels possible now that you've gone through all of this and learned how to work with your nervous system and prioritize pleasure and have it be more fun and playful and experimentative other than feeling like a duty? I feel like, I mean, anything that I want to set my mind to is possible, you know, like from a, from the standpoint of, you know, the way I interact with my kids and, and the way that I, interact with my husband and that, I mean, I feel like him and I are starting off like a whole nother piece of our relationship, like exciting piece of our relationship that, you know, we've been kind of going through the motions have, you know, we've had little kids for a long time. So I'm just excited with like where we're going to go from here, you know? And, and then, like I said, just applying like what I've, what I've experienced with like this life force energy, like in, within me, like, and how that's going to propel me wherever I want to go. Oh, so cool. (laughs) Yay. All right. Well, who, in your opinion and in your words should join this program? Any, any woman that really wants to prioritize her pleasure and just like get to this whole other piece of yourself that you may have never even seen before, because doing the practices and going through the program with you, you're going to push people to not just, not necessarily push them, but just allow that, that space and that um, permission to go there. And that's something that a lot of people have not had. This is, this is the, I mean, this is the way you have to make yourself a priority. And, and by doing this, you, you could discover this whole other piece of yourself that like has been hiding in there, just like, waiting to get out. And like, if you let her out, it's going to be freaking awesome. (laughs) Was, was that something that you were slightly scared of in the beginning? Cause I've heard people tell me that that they're like, I don't know who I'm going to be if I do this. (laughs) 
No, I think so. I've been my whole life. I've been a big like uh, rule follower, um, doing things because I thought people expected me to do things a certain way. So I think going through like the craziness I went through with um, my son's health and stuff and my own health, I, I started getting past that to where now I'm just like, I, I'm ready to freaking do this. Like I'm done with that. I'm done with living up to other people's expectations. Like I know there's something inside of me that's like, it's because it's coming out, but it's like, how can I like help her to come out in a way that like she can be her best self type thing. So I, that didn't scare me. Um, because I think I had faced that scary side before this, thankfully, but I had to understand that. And those dark places are like going to those dark places are super necessary because those are the, those are where you're going to find those pieces of yourself that have been like pushed down for so long. So I encourage people to do that. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Awesome. Wow. Well, any other thoughts, words of wisdom or anything else you'd like to share? Um, words of wisdom. I, I don't know about words of wisdom. I just encourage people to, to do it. And, and even just to, to take a call with you or Jennifer Love, just to like talk about their situation and how you guys might be able to help them. Because I don't, I really don't think people will regret it if they move forward with this because it's just, uh, it's just, it's valuable. If, if you, if people allow themselves to go there and do the work, it can really provide value to their lives. Yeah. Mm. Well, sexuality work does that. <laughs> <laughs> I, the podcast a couple of weeks ago was about how that's really the key for life success. And yet so few people ever go into these, into these realms, but it really does change and shift everything. So thank you so much for bringing that up and sharing your beautiful story and words of wisdom. And I love you so much. And thank you for being on this podcast and sharing your story with everyone. For sure. Thank you, Tilly. Yes. Okay. We'll see you soon. All right, mamas, if this is something that you know you are ready to embark on now and you are ready to get started on this journey of prioritizing your pleasure, learning to regulate your nervous system and reignite the excitement and the fun and the play in the bedroom with your partner, then I want you to head to www.tillystorm.com forward slash sensually dash embodied dash woman. And you can go apply for the program. We start a new group of women every six weeks, so you can go and and book your call, take the quiz and book the call to speak with someone on our team about if this program is a good fit for you. And if now is the right time for you to join us, we would love to speak with you. Thanks so much for listening. And please don't forget to share this with a friend. Enjoying this content, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the multi-orgasmic mama podcast today. And don't forget to spread the love by sharing this with a friend.